they already stand before you guilty of enough. And they don't need anything from me. We know that God has withheld His reserved judgment for those individuals that are responsible for killing His people. God doesn't forget injustice. Stephen's prayer was God help them to be saved. Help them to get right. God don't let this be something that keeps them from receiving the message of the gospel. And he had a great love for the lost. It's difficult to love those individuals who hate you, isn't it? When people go to their utmost to persecute you, do we understand persecution in the context of Stephen here? It's hard. Listen, I'm, I've met people that, I mean, honestly, I believe if, they, if it were legal, they'd just kill me. I, they just, you meet them and you try to speak pleasantly to them. You've never done anything to them, never met them before. But just because you're a follower of Christ, if they could have their way, they'd kill you. I've met people and they had that much hatred in them for Christ. Satan had inspired these individuals to surround Stephen and by God's consent take his life. I want to remind you that if God's power comes into your life, the result will be that individuals will come to Christ. But there will also be opposition. The question you have to ask yourself is what's important? Stephen saw heaven. He saw God and Christ on his right hand. And he said that's what's important. And I fear that the reason many of us are more believers than disciples and more disciples than individuals who are set apart as having honest report full of faith and power is because the cost can be too great. And the reason is because we count our lives very dear and precious. And we think that our miserable existence, which is three score and ten, perhaps, years, is worth too much to have it snuffed out or cut short in the service of God Almighty. And that was the difference between Stephen and the rest of the disciples. Because Stephen lived for one thing, and that was to please God. You don't need to be chosen to be picked out to be selected in this church by individuals that recognize that you're devout and that you've got good wisdom and God's power. I, I believe that those traits are recognizable. As much as with the discernment that God allows us to have, we can see. And you can see an individual that's got God's power in their life. But we don't need that kind of selection to actually have it. Stephen had a simple mission, and he did it. His job was to wait on widows, and he did it. And in the way, God empowered him to preach the gospel, and he did that. And the priest, by the host, got saved. And there was a sect and a group in a certain synagogue that didn't like it. And they caused him a lot of trouble and murdered him. And the law didn't do anything about it. Saul, who would have been a representative of the law in that area, did nothing. He consented to it and then got a permit to pursue and hunt Christians. And multitudes came to the Lord. Persecution doesn't matter. Persecution can be a catalyst 
for the power of God's Holy Spirit. You can beat Peter and John, but God's Holy Spirit will impress individuals that the gospel is true and their souls will be saved. If we want to take anything home tonight, I think that by way of conclusion, if we could boil it all down, it would be this. There's nothing more important than simple obedience. Nothing matters more to God than simple obedience. And Maybe you'll be called to stand up before the multitudes and preach the gospel and have them come to Christ. Maybe you'll be called like Peter to be crucified upside down. Pastor, this is America. Thank God it's America. I hope it stays America. Maybe God will call you out of America. This country's changing. It's not the way it was 10 years ago, and it's sure different than it was 20 years ago. And at the rate that it's changing, I'm telling you, a change of parties politically is not going to make any difference. And how important it is it that America stay the same. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I love my country, but I'm just telling you this country ain't worth saving. There's nothing to save. We've thrown God out of our schools. We've taken Him out of our public life. He's not allowed in the common places. His church had better keep quiet and be careful what they preach. He's not allowed in the political campaigns. Morality is not supposed to be an issue for conservatives anymore. Hey, you part of the conservative party? You know the conservative party says you need to separate your finances and your morals? Who cares about your finances if you don't have morals? Hey, how about a 95% tax and be a nation that fears God? Socialism would please God if we had some morals about it. Pastor, that's a terrible thing to say. Paul sure lived under a wicked government. He kind of said something like that. Our problem in our nation is not our politics. I'm mixed between telling Christians to get out and vote and telling you to get on your knees and pray. Maybe next, next time there's an election, maybe we should stay home and pray. Pastor, that won't change anything. That's why we don't change anything. So you're a little off on that. Well, I've always voted and that hadn't changed anything. See, we care more about just having our lifestyle and our way of life preserved than we do about seeing the lost come to Christ. And that's what ought to matter. Maybe we ought to have our homes seized and our finances and our assets taken so we could just focus on the things that are important. It would probably help the church a lot. Maybe churches ought to get rid of their buildings. And I'm not one of these, I'm not into this whole emergent church nonsense that says you have to sell your building and it's a, it's a wicked thing. But, but maybe we ought to just get out of our stupid buildings and, and have to meet in a place that means something just because of the ability to assemble with like-minded believers. Maybe churches ought to give up some of the petty nonsense that they waste their time on, get into the business of preaching the gospel and the fullness of power. Because the consequence of this little situation in Jerusalem was that...